Hey everybody, it's Ann Kaplan from uh, me and Ann Kaplan Childbirth Services. I'm experimenting with my phone and my camera and my computer this week because I can't find my tripod. So here I am broadcasting from a slightly different situation. Probably doesn't seem that different to you, but it feels really weird to me because I have like, I'm a creature of habit and I had my whole system and now I have to reinvent it. But anyway, what I want to talk to you guys this broadcast about is a continuation of what we've been talking about this whole week, which is positivity and how to flip your negative attitude, how important it is to work on making your life a little bit more positive and your mindset a little bit more positive because it completely affects everything in your life. And if you have liked my... Oops you are going to get to see them again right now. So what I'm gonna talk about today is how does positivity affect your discipline with your kids? And um, I'm gonna tell you guys a story that is embarrassingly true about me because I'm a human being, I'm a problem solver, which means I focus on problems and I take that attitude towards my kids if I don't watch out. And so I noticed a pattern a few years ago that was going on for way too long before I put a stop to it, which was I would go to parent-teacher conferences and every time I would sit down with the teacher, the teacher would tell me all this amazing stuff about my kid and, oh, they're doing great in class, they have lots of friends, they're, you know, adjusting really well, I, I see them doing problem solving and they're learning so much and blah, blah, blah. And the whole time I would just be like, well, but really... Haven't you noticed that um, this or that kid has an attitude problem or they're really grouchy or they're super sloppy or, you know, come on, be honest. I'm not one of those parents who needs you to tell me all the good stuff about my kid. I know that they, they're, they have flaws. Trust me. And I would literally try to steer my parent-teacher conferences in the direction of like, tell me all the things that are bad about my kids because I can tell you all the things that are bad about my kid. And I don't know why it took me so long to realize that I was the one one who thought my kids sucked and everybody else thought my kids were great and that's why I put in the title of this broadcast do you like your kids because let's be honest okay we always of course we love our children we love them because they're pieces of us and biology and the universe has made it that way but there are many many times when we probably don't like our kids and the same negative down spiral that can happen with our mindset around negativity can totally happen with our kids around negativity. If you get your little problem solving goggles on and you start looking at your kids through that lens, pretty soon all you see with your kids are problems. And you miss all the amazing things about your kids. So um, remember what we talked about yesterday. You see this? Actually, you know what? Now that I'm using my phone, I can do something even more. Let me show you my messy desk. Um, so first I want you to look at this same pie chart we talked about yesterday. When you put the majority of your mindset and your focus on in the negative stuff, all the things that kind of stink around your kid, maybe they always leave their stuff on the floor or they, um, you know, they've always turned their homework in late or they, they're fighting with their sibling all the time or whatever. Now your entire consciousness when it comes to your child is almost entirely taken up by all the lists of flaws that you, that your children have. And this tiny, tiny little piece is the amount of your brain you're letting to think, my kid's actually amazing. And guess what, you guys, your focus is your reality. So remember this chart from Tuesday, you have a negative situation. Let's say, uh, once again, your kid's leaving their stuff. Every time that your kid comes home from school, she drops her backpack on the floor. I'm telling you this out of experience. My daughter, Georgia, every single day, she comes home from school without fail, drops her backpack on the floor. And I've asked her a million times not to do it. And that's my negative situation. That's my own personal hell that Gigi has put me in. <laughs> and what does that happen? Oh my God, Georgia, she left her stupid book bag on the floor again. She has a major problem. This is a huge problem that she has. And if I don't teach her how to not leave her backpack on the floor, I'm failing her as a mother. And this is a massive character flaw that she has that she can't stay organized and she can't keep up with her stuff. 
And now what happens? Oh my gosh, my negative emotion. I'm so disappointed in myself as a mother. I'm so disappointed in Gigi. And oh my God, what am I going to do about it? I'm going to start screaming at Gigi and telling her all the ways in which she has disappointed me. And now we're right back to the beginning again of some horrible negative situation. And my awareness, my perception, my description in my brain of Gigi is entirely focused on the pack fact that she always leaves her crap on the floor that is my reality with Gigi and the person that Gigi is to me not a complete person it's not a complete person who actually is incredible and wonderful and she's an amazing weird ethereal unicorn wood nymph person that has been sent to the earth to float amongst us mere mortals and make us think about the world in a different way that's not how I think about Gigi when she leaves her backpack on the floor I think about her as lazy forgetful um, you know, really terrible with goals. She's, she's got her head in the clouds, all that stuff. And if somebody were to ask me, like, what's your daughter like? That's the person that I would describe to that person. Whereas the people outside me or the person that Gigi really is, is a complete person. This little bit of her is not her entire pie chart. It's this tiny little piece of her that I've magnified in my mind. And what happens when I think about the negative stuff about my kids only that's all I see, and guess what, you guys? When all you see is the bad stuff about your kids, that's all they see, too. Because your kids frame the way that they feel about themselves by the feedback that we give them. And when you see the negative stuff is huge in your, in your kids, you act like the negative stuff is huge in your kids. And that teaches your kids that their negative stuff is huge. And 99.999% of the time, almost all of the time, your kid's negative stuff isn't huge at all. It's tiny. It's just driving you nuts. That's all. It's not really a big deal most of the time. Or it's something that's distracting you from the amazing things about your, your kid. So it's so, so, so dangerous for us to focus on the negative in our kids. It brings everybody to way, way, way down. So, and also, how many times have you spent your entire day just being like Mrs. Negative with your kids? Like, no, you can't do that. Stop doing that. Get over here. I said no. Quit that. Get, you know, constantly telling your kids negative messages. Don't do this. No, you may not. Stop. Quit it. Blah, blah, blah. And what does that feel like? It feels like poison running through our veins. By the end of the day, I, when I have a day like that, I feel like I spent my entire day just crapping out my mouth all over my kids. And then at, by the end of the day, we're all covered in crap. And it feels horrible. It feels crappy, okay? That negative energy, now not only do I have a negative image of my children, I've created a negative environment for both of us to be in. And I'm not getting effective results with my discipline anyway. You think when I spend all day long barking, no, 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 at my kids, they're even listening to me anymore? I have a 13-year-old, and I have just recently realized the new level of ignoring that is possible in a teenager. There's a special look that comes over their face where they are, they're not even in, in this room with you while you're talking to them okay and it's almost directly proportional to how much I'm crapping out my mouth <laughs> so I want to give you guys some tips on how to flip this stuff around because it's very easy for me to talk about how horrible it is and it's really easy for me to say stop doing it but when we're actually trying to do that stuff it's so 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 hard so these are some tips for you guys on how to flip around your negative approach with your kids if you're finding yourself slipping into that First of all, first one's easy-ish. It is say what you want. Don't say what you don't want. So when we talked the other day about forming visions and stuff like that, and do you have a vision for your life that's all about things that you hate? Are you creating a vision out of affirmation or avoidance? That's the same thing we're doing with our kids when we're saying, stop touching that. Don't go there. Don't eat that. No, you can't have that. Blah, blah, blah. It's very simple to switch from saying, uh, don't go outside dressed in that to, you know, please wear a coat when you leave the house. Or, you know, don't touch your brother can become, please keep your hands to yourself. I mean, there are ways for us to say things that are not just this negative, toxic way that we're just spewing out of our mouths all the time. And... That, first of all, is going to get more effectiveness because your kids, and our natural mindset is to focus on what someone says when they say it. Now, if you say to someone, don't touch your brother, what it pops into your kid's head? Touch your brother. 
That's what you're describing with your words. You're describing touching your brother. Whereas if you say, can you please keep your hands to yourself? The image that pops into your kid's head is, oh, keeping my hands to myself. Now, is it gonna work every time? Absolutely not. But you have the two benefits of making it slightly more effective and also not feeling like a screaming harpy all day long. Second tip for you guys, is pay attention when your kids are doing something awesome. So when your kids are just just being and they're not doing all the things that drive you nuts or whatever, spend time with them, hang out with them. You don't even have to say anything about the fact that they're being good. Just the fact that you're giving them attention and honoring them in that moment is going to encourage them to keep doing that. So often we do the opposite of that. When our kids are good and not making a, a ruckus or whatever, we're kind of ignoring them because we're trying to get stuff done. And then when they're being naughty or they need redirection, we're like all up in their business or whatever. Kids love attention. They love energy. Even if it's negative, negative attention and negative energy. So they're subconsciously going to be encouraged to behave the way that gets the most energy and attention from you. So let's try to make sure the things that get the most energy and attention from you are great things that you want to encourage them to do. And pay attention to the things about your kids that are amazing, okay? Yes, Gigi leaves her backpack on the floor her entire life. If I take a step back and I'm I going, I can recognize that she someday will not be living with me anymore. I will never have to step over her backpack again. Whoa. And also, she's going to turn out just fine. It's not like her life is going to be ruined because she left her backpack on the floor. Is it really worth me putting my entire focus, my, all of my Gigi focus is on her backpack? How about the fact that she's super creative? She's amazing at gymnastics. She's hilarious. She's so cuddly. I mean, that's the stuff I want to be spending my time thinking about. And I can choose to do that. So that's my second tip for you guys. Give your kids attention when things are going well. And save your words and your love and your cuddling and all that stuff for that time. When things are going poorly, less words, more action. And we can talk about that in another discipline uh, broadcast, which we will be doing. Third tip for you guys is... Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Get sad. So that's another way that we get, we bring negativity in. We let our kids trigger us or we wait until our kids are really triggering us to do something about their behavior. And by that time, you're off to the races. You're yelling. You're grouchy. Your face looks like a scary gargoyle. And um, that's a time when your kids are, first of all, getting tons and tons of energy and attention from you for something they've done naughty. And then also... It's not effective. Whatever the message is that you're giving your kid is totally lost if it's being screamed at them in anger. So don't get mad. Get sad, meaning get empathetic. Feel sorry for your kid because they made a bad decision and now they're going to have a bummer consequence and it's a, it is a bummer. And the best tip I have for you in that is it's so much easier to remember to do that when you are act fast, when there's negative behavior. Don't wait until you're going crazy because your kid has been annoying you for 20 minutes doing something you asked them to not do for like 20 times. First time, before your bonker balls, step up, say with kindness and empathy, that's such a bummer. We don't do that in our house too bad. Now this or this is going to happen. Okay. Um, and, and when we talk that way to our kids, especially with older kids, when they come to us with a problem, like I got a bad grade on my report card, let's say, instead of being like, you what? You got a bad grade on your report card. I told you to study and you didn't listen to me. And now look what's happened. And oh my God, blah, blah, blah. That, that lecture never goes well. And it doesn't result in anything except a fight. But if you instead react with empathy, don't get mad, get sad and say, whoa, buddy, that must feel really bad to see that grade on your report card. Ouch, I know how I would feel if I got a bad grade. And I remember one time maybe that even did happen to me or whatever. And then you just say like, well, what are you going to do about it, buddy? When you talk to your kid that way, you're not only getting their attention because you're not going crazy, but you're also giving them this subliminal message of like, I, it's going to be okay. I know that you can handle this problem and I'm in, and I ha believe in you. So when we deliver messages that way to our kids, we're instilling them and infusing them with belief and confidence, even when something negative might be going on. So, and then my last tip for you guys, kind of in line with all this, don't get mad, get sp sad, say it with a smile. Because if you are smiling and saying, oh man, what a bummer, blah, 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 or gosh, you guys, I really hope you can keep your hands to yourself in the car today, you know, that kind of message is much more well received 
And also your kids, even if you inside are like, oh my God, if they touch each other one more time in the backseat, I'm going to drive this car off of the side of a bridge. As long as they see you smiling, they don't know that they're getting this like crazy negative emotion and attention from you. And those messages are so much more well received. Disciplining our kids is super, super hard. And what's even harder is disciplining our kids in a way that's nourishing to both us and our kids and doesn't just drain everybody. It's hard and you might need some a little bit of a coach in your corner. Somebody in your corner who can give you objective advice and help you every step of the way if you're trying to make a transformation when it comes to the vibe of your home and the effectiveness of your parenting techniques and all of that stuff. And that's why Mom Me exists. That's what I do every day. I work with parents to figure out exactly what's going on in their lives and craft a plan and a game plan for them of how they can make change that's what they want to have for their vision. If you want help with that stuff, sign up for a free breakthrough session. I'm going to put a link in the comments below. I really hope that I can talk to you guys one-on-one -on -one and hear exactly what you're going through and how I can help you. Love you guys. I hope this week of positivity was helpful for you. I purposely timed it for the holidays, you guys, because this is a time when it's super easy for us to get down. And I love you guys all. I love this group so much. Keep sharing the videos out. Keep commenting. The more we participate, the more we all lift each other up. Have an amazing day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.